Okay guys, so this is going to serve as the first of the videos that introduces the anatomy of the nervous system. Uh, tonight we're going to be focusing on the spinal cord, spinal nerves, and spinal reflexes, as you can see over here. Um, so let's jump into it. So the first thing we want to do is just quick review of central nervous system versus peripheral nervous system, so CNS and PNS. And I think you are still familiar with those, but let's fill that in for a moment. So the way these break down is you got the central nervous system, which we're hopefully familiar with from our previous unit, and that's going to consist of your brain and spinal cord, nice and easy. And the peripheral nervous system, okay, um, is all the nerves. So when we start talking about like spinal nerves and cranial nerves in a couple minutes, that's what we're talking about is the peripheral nervous system. So let's dive into the anatomy of the spinal cord. So big stuff, gross anatomy, that's what we're talking about here. Um, so it runs about 18 inches uh, along from the base of the cranium where it goes through the foramen magnum. So remember that's that huge hole through the occipital bone down to about the L1 um, vertebrae, someplace in the back, right about the level of your belly button. Okay? Altogether, the spinal cord can be divided into 31 segments, uh, each of which has a pair of spinal nerves branching out. So you see right here, this is depicting one segment and you got a pair of spinal nerves, one going to either side and you can see another pair here and another pair here going all the way down and they exit through these little vertebral foramen. So here, remember this is the spinous process, this is the transverse process, um, here's the body of the vertebrae uh, and then there's this little tube here where the, the um, nerve can come out on either side. So when we look at a cross-section of the spinal cord, so this is going to be the dorsal side, this is going to be the ventral side, so the back and the front, um, and you're going to see a couple different sections. So you'll notice the middle section here is darker, because this is going to be all gray matter, which we're going to talk about in a minute, why it's gray. Um, the outside, the peripheral areas of it, are going to be white matter, and we're going to talk about that. And then out here, we've got three different um, key labels we want to make sure we have here. So. Um, on the back side here, we have the dorsal root, okay, so all of this section right here is called the dorsal root, okay. Uh, down here, coming off the bottom portion, is going to be the ventral root. And on the edge over here is going to be the spinal nerve. So this whole section where they would come out over here together is the spinal nerve. And we're going to talk about why each of those parts are important here in just a moment. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the pieces. So let's take a second and actually talk about the spinal nerves themselves. Okay? So each spinal nerve that we've mentioned uh, is mixed, meaning that they carry both sensory and motor, which you can see here and here. Right? So sensory and motor. So the signals are going out uh, to the muscles. That's a motor command, right? And sensory information coming in um, from uh, your touch receptors, your pain receptors, any of the types of uh, information coming in. Okay? Each nerve, when we actually say the word nerve, nerve is a bundle of these axons, right? We learned all about axons last unit, and there's blood vessels that feed them and connect tissue that kind of binds it all together. Okay? And the nerves are named nicely, so the third one down in the neck is C3 for cervical 3. Uh, in the chest, those are, that's going to be thoracic 10 or T10. Um, and the last nine of the nerves, um, kind of from L2 to S5, lumbar and sacral, right? Lumbar and sacral. Um, they continue beyond the end of the spinal cord. So the spinal cord comes down from your occipital bone. It kind of comes down to the end like this. And then at the bottom, the nerves kind of keep coming off. And they go branch off kind of this way, and they go down to the rest of the body. So this is referred to as the cauda echina, this little portion at the bottom here is the cauda echina, uh, which actually refers to like horse's tail. Surrounding all of this are what are called the spinal meninges. Okay, so the spinal meninges are these membranes. They're going to uh, so completely surround. So in this picture, they're the parts that are in blue, blue here, um, and they completely surround the spinal cord. And they actually go up and around the brain as well. So they're also called crani uh, cranial uh, meninges there. But the functions here, they kind of isolate your brain and spinal cord, and they kind of keep them from the rest of the body um, separate so, you know, an infection doesn't necessarily spread to your brain and spinal cord in that way. 
Um, every once in a while, you hear, what you most commonly hear about this is probably meningitis, which is the inflammation, remember itis is inflammation, um, of the meninges usually caused by either a viral or bacterial infection. So let's talk for a moment about the gray matter of the spinal cord. Remember the inside section, all of this area here, you'll notice it's kind of gray matter. Um, and remember, when we have gray matter, um, what that's referring to is it doesn't have myelin, it, myelin on the neurons. So these are unmyelinated neurons. And remember that myelin is what sends the signals fast. When you don't have myelin, it implies that we have processing going on in that area, right? So in this case, we're going to be processing for spinal reflexes, which is the last topic we're going to have here. But the section in the middle here is where we're going to process and control all of our spinal reflexes. So when we look at the white matter of the spinal cord, which remember that's all the way around the perimeter here, going all the way around the outside, okay, the white matter is white because it has myelin. It's myelinated neurons, okay, and we describe it as superficial because remember it's around the outside um, or peripheral in relation to the gray matter. Um, and there's two sections. There's ascending tracts, which are going up, right, and they're going to always be carrying sensory information up to the brain. So if I stub my toe, the way the signal gets up to my brain is through the ascending tracts of the spinal cord, right? Um, descending tracts are always going to carry com motor commands down. So if I want to wiggle my toe, the descending tracts carry that signal down the spinal cord and then eventually out the nerves that go down into my legs. So we've got two different sections, the ascending, taking sensory information going up, and motor, taking the commands down the spinal cord. And remember to use the white matter because that's the fastest way to get this information up and down. We're not processing it like in the gray matter. We're just, these are highways that send the signal as fast as possible up and down the spinal cord. So now let's take a moment and talk about the actual nerves themselves and which nerves come off the spinal cord. So a key vocab word that I want to make sure you guys know right off the bat is this idea of a nerve plexus, which you'll see right up here, okay? So all the nerves come off, right? And you can see them numbered here, C1, C2, C3, C4 coming off. Um, but in four spots in particular, these nerves kind of weave together. See how those are kind of connected right there? And then these kind of connect here. Um, those are what are referred to as the cervical plexus and the brachial plexus, and you'll see the same thing happens in the lumbar and the sacral. Um, and what that does is that allows, if there's damage in those nerves, you can actually send the signal out through an alternative pathway. So for instance, let me switch colors here. Um, let's say this nerve right here gets wrecked. Uh, something happens and it gets destroyed. You get whiplash and that gets ripped right out. The, the roots get ripped right out. Okay? So instead of having a whole section of your body that's paralyzed as a result, because um, this nerve can't see the signal, the signal can't get that way, we could send it out from the nerve. Your body can kind of retrain the pathways and send the signal out through one above it and then cut down and still get the signal out to the same area. So a plexus kind of gives us these backup pathways there. Okay? Um, the rest of this is just a list of nerves. In the standard classes, um, I only ask you to know the plexuses. Okay? In the honors classes, I do want you to learn the individual nerves, so things like uh, the, the uh, phrenic nerve goes all the way up here um, down to the diaphragm, controls the diaphragm, and the axillary goes to the shoulder and so forth. But there's a nice list at the end here. Um, these are just images to kind of help you visualize where they go. So on this page, you can see a little bit more of the nerves of the arms, of the muscular, musculocutaneous, and the median, and the ulnar, radial, and so forth, and where they go in the body. On this one, we see our next two plexuses, the lumbar, the lower back, okay, and then the sacral plexus, and you can see how those are woven together um, in those areas again, and some specific nerves there. But... Um, and then a little detail of the leg and where the signals go to. So some of my students find this interesting, all the different, so you've got all these branches that come down into the foot, and over here kind of breaks down which nerves kind of go to which portion um, along there. So you just have this as a reference. You don't need to, we don't need to go through this together here. And here's the breakdown of all of it in a nice, this is probably the easiest way to eventually study and go through with it. Um, it's just broken down by plexus and then the individual nerves that go with each section. So this slide just kind of gives you an idea of something that's referred to as a dermatome. So because the nerves go to certain areas, they're fairly consistent. Um, the areas here, so right in the shoulder here, you'll see the shoulder is kind of marked C4. Okay, so that's the cervical four nerve kind of comes off and goes to that area. So if some person was experiencing um, numbness from that area, you'd have a pretty good indicator that that's the nerve that's damaged versus if they were having numbness just from the middle finger out, 
to the pinky finger, you might notice that, oh, okay, that corresponds to the C8. Uh, so having this map of the body lets doctors kind of get an idea of where there might be damage with certain things. All right, so our last topic in this video, guys, is the spinal reflexes, okay, and so, so what we mean by a reflex is not reaction time. I know that's what people think of. A reflex is going to be something that's controlled. Our body responds without your cerebrum, which we haven't learned much about yet, but the conscious part of your brain even being aware of it. So if I put my hand on a hot stove, I actually move my hands off that hot stove before my brain is even aware of it. You've all had that experience where you touch something and you move and you're like, what the hell happened? And you're like, oh man, my hand hurts, okay? Um, so that's what we're getting here. These are the spinal reflexes and they're rapid, automatic, automatic uh, nerve responses triggered by specific stimuli, mostly pain. That's our biggest one is pain stimuli, okay? And they're going to be controlled by the spinal cord, gray matter, okay? So gray matter is what you want to be putting in there, not the brain. So our, our spinal cord actually moves your hand, not your brain in this case. So this diagram is useful in depicting how that actually happens. So if we get some sort of a uh, painful stimulus, right? So we, we put our hand down on something sharp here, okay? You've got a receptor inside that hand um, that, will re that will reach threshold, send the signal up through here. It goes in through that dorsal root. So remember, we have two portions. Um, and the dorsal root is how all the sensory information is going to go into the spinal cord. And once it comes in here, it's going to go into the gray matter. And right in here is where we do all that processing. Remember, gray matter is unmyelinated, and it's unmyelinated because we're, we're not sending the signal over long distances. We're processing using the information. So right here in the middle, your brain says, oh, wow, that hurts. We need to lift our hand off of that. And we'll send a signal out through the ventral root and out through these motor neurons all the way out to the muscles that actually lift your hand up and off of the, the sharp object, okay? We do eventually feel it. you notice there's a split here. So this signal goes over here, it goes into the ascending tracks. So it goes up this flying highway up the what myelinated portion of your spinal cord all the way up to your brain. So your brain eventually is aware of it. It's not like your brain isn't told, but you will move your hand. This portion here, the actual moving your hand happens before the signal will even reach the brain. And that's why we refer to it as a reflex. Um, it's a response from uh, from your spinal cord, or you'll see there's a couple with the brain stem we'll talk about later in the week. Um, that where the where the brain stem can actually respond before your conscious portion of your brain is even aware of it. So that's going to wrap up our introduction to the spinal cord, spinal nerves, and spinal reflexes. That's what we were hoping to accomplish here. Uh, tomorrow in class, we'll, we'll go over some of this and take questions. So if you have questions, make sure you mark them on there, um, and I'll see you in class.